Hello, welcome back to Mojo Grip Mike here. Today we're doing an updated comparison video between the Sling and the Vans RV10. Now, if you recall, a year ago we made a similar comparison between the Sling 4 and the RV10, and since then, Sling has come out with a more powerful airplane in the Sling TSI. So I thought it was worth it to compare the numbers once again. And for this video, we'll use the same categories, your mission, design, comfort level, performance, and the cost to own either of these airplanes. And so, let's consider the mission first. Any airplane that you're going to own or fly, your mission has to come first. And both these airplanes are marketed as true cross-country airplanes. Let's take the Sling TSI. With this airplane, you can fly over 800 miles, same thing with the RV-10. Both of them can get you from point A to point B with full tanks in. Now, the useful load on the Sling is just a little bit over a thousand pounds at 1,015, and the useful load on the RV-10, you're looking at closer to 1,200 pounds. But I think the right number to pay attention to is your payload. So your payload is the amount of space you have left after you filled up your tanks. And with the RV, you're in the 700 range, depending on how you build the airplane. So you can have a payload anywhere from 730 pounds to 790 pounds. With the Sling TSI, you're also in the 700 pound range. The standard payload for the Sling is 745 pounds. So once you've filled up the tanks in either of these airplanes, you have at least 700 pounds of load that you can put in them. So when you consider the mission and your useful load, your payload and the range, you're basically getting the same bank for the money if you go with the Sling TSI or the RV-10. So we'll give them equal on this. Next thing we're going to look at is the design. First, aesthetically, and as they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So really this will be based on personal preference. A first look at the RV-10, this is an airplane that truly looks like a modern four-seater airplane. And the closest thing I can compare the RV-10 to is a Cirrus SR-20 or SR-22. Or you can look at the Lancer Mako. All these airplanes look very similar to each other. But more importantly, when you think of the design in terms of performance, and in terms of the cockpit and cabin space, I think Vans did a really awesome job with the RV-10, with what you get, and the fact that you can truly carry four people in this airplane and fly close to a thousand miles. Now, we'll look at the Sling TSI. Personally, this is the better looking airplane for me. The reason why, there's truly nothing out there that looks like a Sling TSI or a Sling 4. As I said, when you look at the RV-10, you can find two or three other airplanes in the market that looks just alike. But with the Sling, find me an airplane that truly looks like a Sling on the ramp. And when you think of the design in terms of the flying characteristics of the airplane, I think TAF has done a really good job in designing the new TSI with the performance. With this airplane, you're getting faster speeds, you're also getting better useful load and better payload. So again, design wise, I would say it's based on personal preference, but when you think aesthetically and also you think of the behavior of each airplane, I think they're very comparable to each other and there's really not one thing that's better than the other. Comfort. It's hard to judge the comfort of any airplane because really it's gonna be based on sitting and sitting positions and the cabin space that you have in the aircraft. So normally, an RV-10 actually is a more spacious cabin than the Sling because the airplane is a little bit taller and you have maybe two to three inches wider in the cabin. But when you think of true comfort, you also have to think of the material used in the interior of the airplane. And both this airplane being experimental, you're gonna find so many different cabins and so many different interior designs in terms of the sitting and the material used in the seats. Now, for me personally, I've sat in both the Sling TSI and the RV-10. 
and I can tell you they're both just as comfortable. Again, the one thing I can pick out with the RV10 that's slightly better is the fact that you have more headroom and you have just a bit more inches uh, with the width of the cabin. But in terms of the sit-in and sit-in position, both these airplanes are true four-seaters and both in the front and in the back seat, you're gonna be comfortable even on long flights. One more thing I will pick out with the Sling TSI is that the design of the interior really feels more like a car. It really feels like you're in your car when you're sitting in that cabin. And although the RV10 has a higher roof line or a wider cabin, it doesn't feel that way. You don't notice that you're in a smaller or bigger space. So comfort level, I truly cannot say one is better than the other. This also would depend on personal preference. Now the performance. This is one of the biggest factors you're going to consider if you choose to build either of these airplanes. You're going to consider your speed, your climb rate, your range, your engine size, your fuel burn, and so on and so forth. And if you saw in the last video where we compared the Sling 4 to the Vans RV10, in that comparison, the RV10 was the sole winner by a landslide because the RV10 does have a bigger engine, it is faster, and you get better performance simply because you have a high performance engine in the airplane. Now with the new Sling TSI, you're still using a smaller engine than you have in an RV10, but the difference is you have a turbocharger in this new engine and you're getting a lot more performance from the engine compared to the Sling 4. The new TSI uses a new Rotax 915 engine which has 145 horsepower while the RV10 uses a Lycoming 540 engine which has 260 horsepower. So you see the difference in horsepower is still there but guess what? With the 145 horsepower you have a turbocharger which allows this airplane to climb at over a thousand feet per minute. Also in the TSI, when you're cruising at over 8,000 feet, expect to see north of 150 knots. That equates to about 170 miles per hour. In the RV-10, again, you're climbing at over a thousand feet per minute, and this airplane will cruise easily at 160 to 180 miles per hour. Most builders who fly this airplane actually cruise north of 200 miles per hour. So we can say in the speed range, the RV10 still has a slight edge over the Sling TSI. But guess what? In an RV10, cruising at 200 miles per hour, you're burning 13 to 15 gallons of fuel. Whereas in the Sling TSI, which many of you saw me fly, you can also cruise up to 200 miles per hour and you're burning less than 10 gallons of fuel per hour. So it really depends on how you look at it. Yes, in the RV10 you have a bigger engine which allows you to go faster, but you're going to be burning more fuel. Whereas in the Sling TSI you can go just as fast and you're saving on your fuel costs. So operating costs per hour will be more in the RV10. Another factor you should consider when looking at performance is that when you're at a higher altitude or you're flying out of a high density area, you need to consider how well your airplane is going to perform. Now what generally happens in a situation like this is that an airplane like the RV-10 has to account for density altitude. Same thing with the Sling TSI, except the turbocharger in the Sling TSI will give you full power all the way to 23,000 feet. What that means is whenever you're flying in a high density altitude area, you're still getting the same amount of power as you would if you were flying on a normal day where there is no density altitude. What all of this technicalities really means is that if you were to take a Sling TSI and an RV-10 in a high density area, and you were to compare them head to head and they take off from the same runway, chances are the Sling TSI will go side to side with an RV-10 or actually outperform the RV-10 in a climb out situation. Just keep that in mind. 
So as much as I like to give the RV10 the better edge when it comes to performance, I believe the Slink TSI can go toe to toe with it in various situations. Now let's take on the price and the cost of ownership. To buy and build an RV10 will cost you anywhere from $135 to about $150,000. Same thing with the Slink TSI. To get the kit and build one out, you're looking at $135 to $150,000. Now those projections are just to get everything you would need to build out an airplane. If you were to find a completely built RV-10 or a Sling TSI, you're probably looking in the 200s, probably around $200,000 or just over $200,000. The kit for the Sling TSI starts around $56,000 and the kit for the RV-10 starts around $48,000. But if you were to do a quick build with any of these airplanes, you're going to be paying more to build an RV-10 because the airplane takes longer to build. As a matter of fact, the quick build kit for a Sling TSI is anywhere between twenty dollars and $30,000, whereas the quick build for an RV-10 is at least double that amount. Now, when you think of what you're getting with your kit, your engine, avionics, depending on what you decide to go with, you can say perhaps you're getting more for the money with the RV-10 because you're getting a bigger engine for around the same price. Whereas with the Sling TSI, when you consider all of your costs with a smaller engine, you're paying roughly the same amount. So maybe we'll give an edge to the RV-10 because you have a bigger engine in it. But when we think of the cost of ownership, that bigger engine is also going to cost you more to maintain. You're going to spend more money in maintenance. You're also going to spend more money in your fuel burn and you're likely going to spend more money when you decide to overhaul that engine. So the question is, do you save now and pay later, or do you pay more now and save later? And the last thing we're going to compare is the build time. Any of this airplane will require a lot of time to build, at least a thousand hours. An RV-10 will take on average 2,000 to 2,500 hours to build out if you were building the airplane by yourself. In a Sling TSI, you're looking at about 1,200 to 1,500 hours to build one out. If you decide to go with a quick build in any of these choices, you're going to save a few hundred hours. And so as before, when it comes to the price and the cost of maintenance and the build time, I think the slight edge will go to the Sling TSI because it will cost you less to own the airplane on an everyday basis and it will cost you less time to build one out. And that is it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give a thumbs up. And if this is your first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button for me. I've got a lot more videos coming your way. Now, I expect that there are going to be some questions and a lot of comments below. So if you have a preference on something I said, or you have a correction about something I said about either of these airplanes, I want to hear it in the comments below. So be sure to leave a comment, and I will catch you all on the next video.